All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I am Megan Hardy. I'm the founder of Fitness Uncharted, and this is where we talk about mindset and strategies that are going to help you to build muscle, lose body fat, improve your metabolism, and leave you feeling really freaking confident and empowered. Today, I'm super excited because I'm here with some very special guests who are near and dear to my heart, my co-coaches. We've got Coach Christy, we've got Coach Courtney, and we've got Coach Jen here today. And we're just going to share today with you guys some of our personal stories and really their personal stories and some tips and tricks with you guys for how to make your health a priority during any season of life, especially today, I think we're going to be talking about some difficult seasons of life. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right into it. Christy, you want to start us off girl with some of your, (laughs) hello, 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 everybody. Um, so I'm Christy. I am, well, I'll be 47 this month. So my seasons of fitness have been, um, they're, they're different, right? Just like seasons of relationships with friends or seasons of relationships in marriage, right? Like there's, you have a relationship with fitness. Um, and so they can be different. And, um, so for me, for my background, um, I, I fell in love with the way I felt working out when I was 17 years old. I remember that was my first, like, I want to live with this feeling forever. Like, I just loved it. I loved the feeling, the high, the endorphin, like I loved, I love all of it. Um, so I always like just kind of did it for the feeling really. Um, and then, uh, fell in love with the, uh, competition side of things. And so really navigated into, um, hitting the stage and really enjoying that whole season in my twenties. Um, and then took a break for a while, um, got married, had children, um, and then, uh, competed, I think four years ago was my last show. And that season was beautiful, right? That was just, you know, when you have those moments where you just love it and there's just like every aspect, it's like the stars align and everything's just great. Um, and so, and now, um, I said in this season, um, today where I'm in a difficult season, like I, I am currently in a very difficult season. Um, and what, even for me, for someone who loves fitness has always loved it. And let me also say this, I I even, uh, we had a family um, owned gym. So it's when I say it's been a part of me, the the industry has been a part of who I am um, for for over 20 some years. Um, so with and that, I have said, to say too, Christy is super humble and she has like a whole trophy shelf of, from all her competitions, yeah. <laughs> she has a whole, like all of the, the medals, the trophies on a different wall. If you're watching this on YouTube, but it's on, yeah, it's yeah. on one of those walls. In there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and really to say that to other people, it's not to even toot my own horn. That, that just shows how much I love it. Right. As a person, yeah. like I really love it with that being said, this is where I feel like people will relate. I can love it that much. And in this season that I'm currently in, um, my, my boy has, uh, he's 14 years old. He has Down syndrome and just recently found out that he has, has autism. So he is dual diagnosis and it has really changed um, my, my set of dreams for him um, and the stress that comes along with um, the behavior that he's displays. What does that do for me? Uh, very easily can use it as an excuse day to day to just not want to do anything but sit down on my free time and eat Cheetos <laughs> because it feels good, right? It's soothing and it's comfortable. That is like just a human nature. I can see now why, uh, how I can relate to clients, how that can just be, and it doesn't have to be a, having a child with a disability. It could just be not having a job you like, or not having a marriage you really enjoy, or, you know, just things that can put you in a funk. So what do I do? I have to, I have to purposely, because I know that if I let myself go get into that comfortable mindset of not really caring for me, I will spiral down five years from now into a worse depression because I will, I won't even know who I am anymore. I won't know who I am. So what I do do is uh, I give myself a break on the sense of like, like today, for example, today was a rough day and um, just with some news from a doctor, not, not rough, like just, just meaning when you get news, that's upsetting, right? So I got some news from a doctor that was not what I expected. And um, what do I do with that? Put music on my ears and go for a long walk. Um, 
drink my water, get the sunlight in my face, feel some sweat coming down, and that's therapy for me. Will I work out today? Probably not. It's probably not going to happen realistically today. But I do try to keep control over what I can control, right? So those are those things. I am not um, lifting weights as I would, as I typically love to do. Um, and that's really just because with my time, I have to choose which one I want. Um, and for right now, I'm choosing steps because if I, you give me an hour out in the sunlight, walking mm -hmm. paths, I'm good. But sometimes yes. having an hour um, in my garage, I do train currently too, which can, can also be hard out of my garage uh, because I can't, the closest childcare um, gym from where I'm located is 35 minutes. And that's just not realistic for me right now. So I have to navigate and make that work at home. I'll pick it back up, but um, but I will say this too, even though Cheetos and chocolate always sounds good in a moment, I will say, and I think everyone else can identify with this, for some reason, after you do it, about 30 minutes, you feel like complete crap. Like yeah. you feel yucky. Um, whereas if you go for a walk and get a good sweat and, and you feel amazing. So it's really uh, knowing like that's the easy road, but is that like, is that really the, am I doing the best thing for me? Right. So um, it's really a lot totally. of discipline and just knowing what's best and, and doing what you know is best. You know, I'm sure uh, a lot of us, listen, like a lot of people listening right now, I, I'm sure growing up, we've all had jobs that we've hated. Right. And it's like, do I really want to go to work today? But there's going to be a consequence to that action, right? By not going to work. So there's a consequence to not taking care of your body as well. And I don't want those consequences. At 47 years old, I don't want the consequences of not taking care of my health. So that makes my, my decision a little easier. So, And you're so right. There's something so soothing about the walk outside in the sunlight yes. that's that lasts a lot longer than the chocolate or the Cheetos yeah. at that point in time. But it is interesting how I feel like we all gravitate towards that instant gratification, mm -hmm. like food, like the, I know I do food is like, <laughs> oh my gosh, when I'm emotional or stressed or anything, anything hits the fan, I'm like reaching for that stuff first. I do have to ask you too, have you tried the flaming hot Cheetos or are you a regular Cheetos? I, 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 I have tried the flaming hot, but I'm a regular, uh, but I have tried the flaming hot Cheetos. I have <laughs> you can chocolate and pizza on a stress day. It's like I've landed in food heaven. Like that's my, <laughs> that's my, uh, that's my jam right there. But I, but I do know that I, if I do that, it's, it, it's going to be a while before I do it again. And that's really just because I don't want to self-sabotage, right? Because that's a cycle that a lot of us get into too. Um, and, and being careful not to beat ourselves up when we have those moments too, like, like mm -hmm. to be really real, right? Like how many of us do that? And then like, I don't know, an hour later, even the next day, it's like, man, I'm a real piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, you know what I mean? But we can take it to that level and um, we're human, you know, we are human. And I, this is also this trying season for me is teaching me what I can control. And I think that that's really, really important for people to really hone in on. And the sense of like, even today, like um, having my moment um, with the news that we got from the doctor, my husband was the one who had to look at me and go, can we control this? Is there anything we can do to control this right now? No, there's not. But then why are we going to sit here and have a breakdown over it? Right. So it was a, it was a click moment for me. Like, you know, sometimes you want to go, but just let me cry. Let me be. But sometimes it's like, no, this is what it is, but what can I control? I'm just going to keep doing my thing. I'm going to keep doing my thing. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm just going to keep going, but we can find excuses to not take care of ourselves. I mean, ample. I mean, there are thousands of reasons not to go work out or not to go walking or not to even food prep. Well, I didn't have time. So man, Burger King was right across the street. And I just, da, 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 da. There, there will always be a reason to not take care of ourselves. It, it really comes down to how bad do you want it? How bad do you want? I always think of this your future self to look back and thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there, there was a thousand reasons for me to drop out of college, right? It's like, do we, when does it stop, right? You have to know, like, it's a, it's a very important part of life, taking care of this vessel. We only have this vessel that we're in. You're either going to take care of it or you're not, but you're going to pay the consequences for which one you choose. Yeah. Pick your hard. Yeah. And the reality is there's 
there's always going to be something there's, you know there and so tapping into just like you know what you said knowing what you control and or what you can control and being mindful in those moments like it is what it is you had a day you had a moment and we roll on I mean, mm -hmm. let's just laugh about it for a second. But, you know, I've even had many clients, like, you know, they can't go walking outside. And I understand this, but who would have thought wildfires from Canada? I mean, there's <laughs> always something happening. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. You just have to make it work. And if, if being outside is going to cause you some problems, then I don't, then you just climb your steps or you like do some jumping jacks. Like there's always something to, make us move. And I'm telling you, and you're going to think this is probably funny if you haven't tried it, but there's been times where I've just been so stressed out that I will literally do 20 jumping jacks and 20 push-ups, And I'm not lying. It'll shift me. It'll totally shift me. I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and I love what you said too, about like both of you guys, Jen and Christy, but like not sitting in it. Like you just like, it's one thing to feel the feels. And even if you do eat the Cheetos and the chocolate and you do like, quote unquote, mess up, like not sitting in that place. Like, I mean, even like for me, like when my family I had two family members in ICU at the same time, it was, it was a dramatic, crazy week. And I think I actually bought my brother a family size bag of Skittles at the, to have at the hospital. But that's basically all I ate that week was Skittles um, and, you know, crushed them myself. And I don't think I washed my hair or did laundry or anything that week, like much less my workouts and proper nutrition and all those things. But it was like, that was a, like a short point in time that I didn't let like linger into the following week. And then, then to the next week and things like that, like you might have even longer stretches sometimes that are really off kilter. Uh, but it's like, how quickly can you get back on track? And also like it's like finding that balance of giving yourself grace, but not too much grace, you know, like, it's like, if you're in the, in the heat and thick of it and thick of things like, yes, you have to give yourself some grace. But then I think sometimes we can run with that. And we're like, well, I still just feel like shit, like mentally, emotionally, whatever. So I'm just going to keep sitting in this, even though the, the event is kind of over or past a little bit. So it's like, I feel like finding that balance of like, okay, when do I pick myself back up and move, move on? Because really, if you do that, you could think if we're waiting for life to be perfect, what if it yeah. never gets perfect? You know what I mean? And then you're, you know, 60 or 60, 70 years old at the doctor in really bad condition going, dang it. Why did I do this to myself? You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and I think de-stressing the uh, act of all of it too. I do think some, I have seen many times clients, I, it can get stressful in the head of, oh my gosh, I got to prep my food. I got to make sure I got enough water. I got to make sure I got my workouts in. I got my steps in and we can make it all simplify it, bring it down. Okay. I'm going to have 45 minutes to give to myself today. What can I do in that 45 minutes? I'm going to have four palm sizes of protein. What is that going to look like a day? I'm going to get some fruits and vegetables in. I'm going to drink my water. Like simple, simple, like simple, make it stupid, simple. Yeah. 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 Such good advice. So good. So good. Um, not to go back to the Cheetos topic again, but has anyone seen Flaming Hot, the movie Flaming Hot yeah. about the Flaming Hot Cheetos? <laughs> okay. Now you have to go watch it. Yeah. Like I actually a client shout out to Ashley, um, but she t loves Flaming Hot Cheetos, like are her thing. And she told me about the movie. I was like, no, nah, there was actually a movie about it. And she's like, it's actually really good. And she said at the end of the movie, I said to myself, if this doesn't make you take action on your dreams, I don't know what will. And so I was like, okay, well now I have to watch it. And it's actually, it's about the story of the guy who um, he started from nothing. He was a janitor for Frito-Lays. Oh. And then he introduced the Flaming Hot Cheetos because that they had no chips or anything that really were like the season and flavoring that his people wanted. And so he was like, you know, we, we like the heat and stuff. So anyway, he introduced the idea and now he's like, you know, bajillionaire or whatever. Uh, but wow. anyway, it's his, his whole story from you know, zero to a hundred. And that's like the flaming hot Cheetos story. That so if you really want to, cool. if you want inspiration, <laughs> that is really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, what about you court? What's, uh, what's been some of your tough seasons? Yeah, well, I'm thinking about it and I'm, I feel like I have tough seasons nutritionally and I have tough seasons kind of more physically gym wise. And then I have tough seasons where it's all just a mess or it's all <laughs> on point and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I guess a little of my backstory, I grew up playing, um, 
all sports. That was, I was just active. I love to be outside. I love to play sports. I was always a lot bigger than most kids. And so I was really good against the kids my age. So that was always, it was always really fun when I was little. Um, and then as I went through kind of junior high and high school, uh, it turned into more of just soccer. Soccer was kind of the go-to. And then I played a little bit in college before I decided that I wanted to serve um, an LDS mission, which is like a service mission for my religion. And I went to Tijuana, Mexico and lived a year and a half there. And that was amazing. I did not know that reach out to flaming hot cheetos i understand <laughs> the heat that's a big <laughs> but um that year and a half of my life was the first year and a half where physical fitness being active completely went out the window like my whole life i had been very physically fit i didn't have to think about what i ate i was a kid you know like i just stayed pretty fit when you're a kid you're okay and then yep. being, I think I was about 20 when I left 2021 and I realized pretty fast that I had to start taking care of my body. Um, I gained quite a bit of weight and I was just like, oh my goodness, what, is, like, what is happening? I didn't know anything about carbs and fats and protein and this and that. I didn't care about that world just because it hadn't affected me yet. And so then I got home. And one of my good friends who had played sports with me, she was like, oh, well, I found this fit kind of the same thing happened to her. She also went on one of these uh, missions and she was like, well, I found this 30 day quick fix thing and you should do it with me. And I was like, okay, awesome. Let's do it. So (laughs) it's this 30 day challenge of eating no calories, less, literally less than half the calories so I eat quite a bit. I'm trying to get this half <laughs> in my head. The I amount eat, of calories uh, I was bit. supposed to eat was less than half of what I eat right now. And that was, Ugh. I felt tired. I felt sick. I didn't want to go and do any of the sports that I used to love doing. I didn't want to go to the gym. I had no energy and I lost some weight pretty fast in 30 days, but I can tell you that 30 days later, I had the exact same weight right back on. And I was even more mad at myself because I was like, well, now what? Like I did, I, I ate super healthy. I'm doing quotations for those of you listening. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and I lost the weight, but now I have it back. And so I was just frustrated and I was sad and more than anything that I feel like that point in my life, it, gave me the worst relationship with food, the worst relationship with my body. I wasn't confident anymore. I was like, I didn't like looking at myself in the mirror. Like when I'd go into a bathroom, I would not look in the mirror, not a chance. When I get out of the shower, not a chance was I going to look in the mirror until I had my clothes back on. Um, so that was just, it was a bummer, you know? And then, um, my mom, she has always been huge into CrossFit. That was her thing. And so she was like, Courtney, why don't you come do CrossFit with me? Let's go to the gym. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And I finally got back. I've always been naturally pretty strong. Um, I'm a lot bigger and broader than most women and it's played to my advantage in terms of strength. And so that was a place where I started to feel confident. I loved lifting weights. Like the days where it was weightlifting, I was like, oh yeah, bring it on. I can do this. This is awesome. Um, and so I just fell in love with the gym again. And it was fantastic. I got married. Um, I got my husband to start coming to the gym with me. And then a couple years down the road, I still had a really bad relationship with food. Still had no idea what I was doing. Um, I was a huge binge eater. Like on, I do really, really good during the week, which really good means eating zero calories. And then on the weekends, I would go to town on everything I could find. And it was very unhealthy, obviously. Um, and then one day I found a, a gym that I started going to, um, someone was a nutrition coach and she was like, what do you think about me being your coach? And I was like, sure, that's awesome. Um, when I started with her, I was eating 35 grams of carbs per day is what I thought was right. I was eating protein. That was always good. And then my fats were really low too. And within a month I was 200, 300 plus carbs, like 
super awesome. Started losing weight by eating more food. And I was like, what? This is crazy. This is crazy. (laughs) But it was amazing. I got stronger in the gym. I got faster. I started competing um, in CrossFit. I fell in love even more with that. And then um, fast forward a couple of years, I got pregnant and that was planned. I was excited. It was this super hard decision because I'd finally gotten confident in myself and my body, but I knew that I wanted to have a baby. And so that was a couple of months of like, Ooh, do we continue to have fun and love this lifestyle <laughs> or should I have a baby? And am I going to lose everything that I've worked for? And I won't lie. It was hard having strat and seeing the ch- strats, my little baby, seeing the changes in my body. It was like going back to when I had served that mission. And I was like, Oh no, I'm gaining weight. The scale's going up. I'm not as defined all this crazy, stressful stuff. And I have regrets about the way I handled a lot of my pregnancy, just because I, I feel like I should have been less hard on myself during Mm. that. And I should have kind of enjoyed being pregnant. Like it doesn't happen all the time and it's nine months and you're growing a human and it's this beautiful thing. And I was like, no, it's nine months. I'm going to stay fit. I'm going to be just as fit when I'm done. And I'm going to get even fitter. And it was just like this pressure that was dumb. And even once I had strat, it was like, okay, back to the gym, back at it. Let's do it. And I just, I feel like with that pregnancy and a little bit into my postpartum season, I just didn't enjoy the present. I didn't enjoy what I had. I was always looking to the future. Like, okay, well, I'm going to get fit again. I'm going to have this body type again. I'm going to be able to lift this heavy again. I'm going to be able to run this fast, which is all great, right? Like it's okay to have goals and dreams, but I think it's super important to enjoy where you're at right now. And with Mm -hmm. what I love what Christy said, a little part of what she said was like, later, like in the future, I'm going to get back to the gym, you know, like that's a dream of Mm -hmm. her. She loves that. That's part of her. But right now Mm -hmm. she's just in the moment. She's just controlling what she can control. She's thriving where she's at. And I think that's something that I'm, I'm still learning, but it's being okay with where I'm at right now. And not putting too much pressure on myself because I'm not perfect. I'm not going to ever be perfect, you know? And if I could just enjoy where I'm at right now and enjoy what I have right now, enjoy the couple hours that I get to have in the gym right now, then I'm going to be so much happier because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen in a year from now. I don't know if my baby boy is going to have something that's going to impede me from living my dreams, you know? Like, So just, in, I need to be grateful for what I have right now and just embrace it and enjoy it. And I feel like the past couple of months, I've been able to do that more. I, I've stepped away from tracking. I was a tracking Nazi. It was like, no, I did not go over my carbs. I did not go over my fats. I, I was spot on, you know, and I can honestly say that that hurt me more than helped me. I was overstressed hormones all over whack. I think a lot due to the stress that I was putting on myself. Like no one else was putting that stress on me. It was just me. And the past two months have been amazing. I'm hitting new PRs, personal records in the gym. I'm stronger than I've ever been. Yay. Let's go. I'm, yeah. It's just, and I'm, and I'm happier, you know, and it's not this stressful thing. I'm actually enjoying life again. And my body's getting back to where I want it. Like i I look in the mirror now I get out of the shower and I look in the mirror. You know what I mean? Like Yay. I'm just happier. And so I think my biggest lesson that I've learned so far, and I have so much more to learn, but it's that I don't need to put the pressure on myself. If all I can get in today is a 30 minute walk, then heck yeah, I'm going to enjoy those 30 minutes and I'm going to embrace them and I'm going to love them. And that's it. You know, I'm not going to dwell on the fact that I didn't make it to the gym today. And you know what? On the fourth, Instead of doing the workout that my coach had programmed for me, I went on a run with my sister who I don't get to see all the time, but she wanted to go running. So we went running and I loved it. Mm. So I think it's just enjoying where you're at now and good. not putting unnecessary pressure on you, you know? So good well, and, and being present. Yeah. I was going to say, it's not, 
I mean, it, it is enjoying where you're at, but even if you're not enjoying where you're at, um, doing, doing what you can, because yes. if you continue to say, I just had a conversation with a client the other day, if you continue to say, when this happens, I'm going to have the time. One, that time may never come. And two, figure it out now. Because then when that time comes, you're going to have it nailed and you can, you know, there's more things that you can focus on. There's other things that you can focus on. There's, you know, so it's yes, enjoy, but also like do the things you can. Oh yeah. Right now. Oh yeah. yeah. And there's always totally. something you can do. There's always something. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have, to, have to be all of it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it does not have to be all of it. It doesn't. And sometimes I don't think it ever will be all of it, you know? So if we can just learn to be okay with some of it and make mm -hmm. the most of some of it, then I think mm -hmm. we'll be happier. <laughs> I think yeah. what goes deep right here is you think, I think of some clients that's coming to my mind now that they actually just, it's falling in love with the process. It's like, mm -hmm. like a sense of the journey, like falling in love with it. Not all of it's going to be enjoyable for everyone, but I do, I keep thinking of some clients who just really do not like to work out with free weights. They just do not like it. And it's fine in the sense of, okay, well, how about let's put a vest on, maybe some ankle weights, and let's really push it walking up hills and finding something else to challenge you that you can find joy in. I know for me, those days like that um, sometimes is what my, my mind needs more than being in a garage sweating. And, and you know what I mean? So it's finding if you absolutely hate one form of exercise, there's many other forms, right? So um, think movement, movement. Mm -hmm. And what can, what can I do for myself that I actually enjoy? It doesn't have to be grueling, you know, or miserable. That's mm -hmm. just not going to be sustainable. That's just not going to be. Yeah. Right. Nope. nope. Yeah. I also feel like we need to do another episode about like uh, bounce back culture for moms speaking as the only <laughs> not mom here, but <laughs> I like, actually my sister and I were talking about this on our recent trip and because she really wants me to have a baby y'all like she's like please give me a little one like give me a, I just need to hold something small um is what she said but anyway and just for anyone listening I'm the only not non-mom here in this conversation <laughs> but she I told her I was like I hate that like people even even for me they'll be like oh you'll be fine because you'll bounce your body will bounce right back and I'm like but what if it doesn't and that's yeah. okay and like, I'm okay with that. Like, are you okay with that? Cause like, why are you projecting that on me? Like, I'm fine if it doesn't, and it's okay. Cause I literally just carried a baby for nine months and then birthed the baby, a, a new human mm -hmm. out of my vajay. So, bro, <laughs> you know, I'm like, but I don't know if you guys, like how much y'all experience, you know, the bounce back culture and like with court, what you were saying, I feel like that's hard to stay present and enjoy that time when you're like, my only goal and focus is like, can I get my body back? Can mm -hmm. I get my body back? I'm like, anyway, I feel like we need to do an episode about that. We'll do that. <laughs> that would be really good. I also think that, that that topic in general can get really, um, it, it's really kind of good, but we, I don't want to divert here, but it just came to my mind that, you know, a lot of times too, the bounce back culture or just in general for people who are, it's comparing yourselves to other people. I can remember thinking um, after I had my children, like I would compare myself to other, um, you know, people that I, I say people, I don't know what to call them. They're not friends, but they're not, they're like acquaintances, right? That, you know, yeah. in the gym that you just see in the gym lifting, if you're lifting person, you know, whatever. Um, and you start to compare yourself to them and they didn't just have a baby. You did. And it's being careful that we're all in different seasons. Even if we just didn't have a baby, like maybe we're caretaking for someone, or maybe we're, you know, just, we're just at a season that we can't give it a hundred percent of our attention and being very careful not to self-sabotage because we can't be as good as that person mm -hmm. in this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's yeah. that girl that I go to the gym with. Well, I don't go to the gym with her. I see her at the gym, yeah. rock solid body. Like <laughs> anyway, she just got done having a baby and she's sporting her sports bra and her little shorts. And I'm talking to her and it's, it was her second kid, but she's like your age, Courtney, 20, mm -hmm. you know, she's a baby. And I'm talking to her, but I've like in watching her, I'm like, damn. And not even that I was comparing my, not even, not even that I was comparing myself to her, but there was a sense of like, she just had a baby and she looks yeah. good. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I've got like 20 on you. So yeah. <laughs> I've got, you know, numerous kids years. and 20 yeah. years on you. So like, what am I even looking at you? Like it's, it, it wasn't, it wasn't even a comparison really. Yeah. It was, um, it was more so like, I mean, call it even an envy of just like yeah. how cool that was, but she, you know, that that was, that that's part of her, but it also made me revert back to when I had my kids and was that, was that me was, that, you know, did I immediately try and get back in there? I can tell you, I did not immediately start <laughs> wearing sports bras and shorts, but okay. I, you know, but I, you know, it, anyway, so it was just talking yeah. about the comparison and the. When you were talking about that with the gym, I thought of that because I thought about that with the girl the other day. And I thought, what am I even doing? Right. Like, because, you know, I was thinking too, I've even heard people say, um, I guess there's this new, um, I don't know if it's new. I was, I've just become aware of it where um, you guys give me the name of it. So I'm drawing a blank where you can go to the doctor now and they can put you on some pill and it takes away your appetite. So oh, you like Ozempic and... There's like the, Some all these, there's these different like things. So you can even get a pellet put inside of you and like all these yeah. different kind of things. And so I've heard people go, well, I have a friend who's dropped 20 pounds and I've only lost four. And I'm like, but the pellet is doing the work. Like she's not working for it. So it's going to come back. See, we compare in ourselves to everyone else. And it's, that is, it's a human nature thing though. I think we're all going to have to fight. Yeah. Yeah. What, Completely what, off subject. Go ahead. Oh, and I was gonna say one of my big, my biggest thing is comparing myself to my past self. Yes. Like, I think that would be the hardest thing with pregnancy and whatnot for is like, yeah. you can't, you can't do that either. Sometimes no. like no. you're a new you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And your body just changes. Like, yeah. you know, it just, um, like my body fat percentage was lots lower in high school, but, um, I weigh less now. And it, 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 I mean, it just, your body changes, like the shape of it and everything um, changes and you it, accepting that, I guess. Um, and let's just say if you don't work out with free weights, just being real, the body tends to call gravity, just pulls it to the floor from your, <laughs> from your rear end to your boobies, <laughs> <laughs> to your knees. It all wants to go to the floor. And, and everything in between. Yeah. <laughs> We call it gravity. They're just yeah. like, <laughs> we can't control that. <laughs> oh my well, gosh. We, we can control if we lift it up. We can, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's one of we, them. Yeah. <laughs> we can, we can do what we can from strength training yeah. and nutrition, yeah. you know, yeah. as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, well, what about you, Jen? What's been some of your hard seasons gosh. and what are your tips and tricks for uh, getting through it? <laughs> yeah. Tips and tricks it's, it's tricky. Cause I feel like with every season, it's, you know, um, you know, I've had seasons of loss that have taken me to, um, like there was a season where I went to heavy drinking, um, a season where I have fallen away from faith, um, season that I'm in a, sorry, I feel like I'm talking in a tunnel with these things on, but I, um, <laughs> seasons right now um going through just things with my children um you know I just lost my father a couple months ago and um you know some some other family stuff and anyway so it's it at times I feel like there's a whole lot of things that come piling down and um exercise is something that I've always been able to get to um doesn't matter and, and, and that's something to that, that's something that I've also struggled with in terms of if I've got something set up and I'm not doing that a hundred percent mentally, that was always a struggle for me as far as like, I didn't do it good enough. I didn't, you know, and it, it was like, it wasn't good enough, even though I did something and I have had to really learn to walk myself through that. Hey, I still did something today. Like I'm going through a lot and I still did something today. Also, I have learned that <laughs> when you are in some of these seasons, it is not best to push yourself like mm -hmm. you maybe can when you're not in those seasons because your body's already under in this fight or flight, you know, state. Um, and so really just checking in with myself has been probably my biggest go-to. And to say that that works, that takes anything away, that makes everything right, no. Um, but... Um, 
the exercise, going back to that, the exercise is something I've always had um, and I can always do, but it doesn't always look the same. And um, sometimes it's really not even driven by motivation. It's a, it's just a part of who I am and what I do. Um, nutritionally, however, hmm, mm. that one is a little bit trickier. <laughs> um, because as you guys know, and we've had numerous conversations, I actually pull away from food. So if I'm having stress or a hard day, um, Cheetos are not my go-to, but <laughs> I do like them, but they're not my go-to. Okay. Um, but um, so trying to actually eat in those moments is actually something that I have to really check in with and lean into um, because I'll pull away from that. Um, and that didn't come, that didn't come because I, um, uh, I'm trying to think of what the word, because I forced it, that was actually an accidental trait that I developed over time, an accidental habit that I developed over time. Um, just being busy, going through things in life. And it was, it was, I would just get busier in things versus trying to eat. Eating is a nuisance to me. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I know that there are people that deal with that. And then there's people that, you know, have the other side of where they turn to the eating because that is a calming, soothing for them. But for me, it's a nuisance. Um, it's easier for me to go do something. Um, but again, being mindful of that. And I think all of us have talked about that. And um, I think that that's something that we as coaches try and really work on with our clients too, as far as how um, it's, it's not just about all of the things that we're doing right or all of the things that we're doing wrong. It's knowing, like checking in with ourselves and having that mindful moment of, acknowledging it, I guess, so that we can, you know, we can learn from when we are in these seasons and what we can do, what we can focus on. And um, it's not something that happens overnight either. It's just like any other habit that you have to build and you have to continue to check in with yourself. And, you know, I've, I've got clients and especially right now, because it's summertime that, you know, I really feel like if I, if I can get my exercise on track, my nutrition will be on track or when this happens, you know, mm -hmm. then I'll be able to get my nutrition on track. And the reality is nutrition's hard. It's, it, it's hard for many reasons. For me, it's hard because I have to force myself to, you know, to eat and to, um, and to make sure that I'm getting good quality foods. And for some, it's, they have to force themselves to not eat all of the, junk food or drink all of the cooler or, um, <laughs> you know, what, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, yeah. but when we can check in with ourselves and we can acknowledge that, then we can hopefully just take smaller steps through those seasons of life. Mm -hmm. Um, and because the, if we can try and do those small things, and when I say try and do those small things, I don't mean eat fast food and drink all the water. Like the, I, I don't mean going and ordering a Big Mac and a large water um, because that's not going to get us to our goals. And I don't mean that from just a uh, physical standpoint. I mean that from mental, from, you know, how we feel overall. We can't continue to do that. Um, but just doing the small things um, and, and when we feel like we can. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, I was going to ask you guys to wrap this thing up. I was actually going to ask, but Jen, you kind of just took mine. So, yeah. but I'll go first and I'll just reiterate what you said. And you have to pick a new one. Um, but but right. I was going to ask if you, <laughs> I was going to ask if you guys were to leave everyone with just like one tip for like, if they're in a tough season right now, or they're struggling with staying on top, whether or not that you would diagnose it as a tough season, but if you're struggling with staying on top of your health and fitness for whatever reason, what would be one tip that you would give them like where to start or what to do, what you would focus on. And mine is going to be kind of reiterating what Jen said, and I'll let you guys go in whatever order, but mine would be just to start with like one thing, one habit, even if it is the big Mac and water versus the big Mac and a soda. Like just start with that one thing. Like for me, I know when my family was in ICU, I did stay on top of my water and I gave myself a little pat on the back for that. And then of course I layered in the other things as I was able to, but anyway, I would just start for me, I would start with one small thing and like give yourself some kind of kudos or props for that. And then add more as you are like physically, mentally, emotionally able to. So that's mine. Who else got some tips? A tip. 
I'm going to come in with, I'm going to come in with, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave everyone with two things. One's going to be a sweetness of just keep it simple, right? Just keep it simple. Um, and I love this, Megan. I mean, this was something that you've had, you know, you, you taught me this as far as the simple simplicity of how easy is it to eat fruit and vegetables three times a day, palm yeah. size of protein four times a day and drink, drink water. Like let's keep it simple. That's going to be me it's being simple. a sweet uh, coach, me being a tough, <laughs> uh, realistic coach. Um, that's and, the and one I, we like. <laughs> and I, and I talk to myself this way. That's why I'm going to just talk. I, I mean, I really do. <laughs> Are you prepared for the consequences if you do not keep your ass moving? And I'm not. And I, I say that to myself all the time. Are you prepared for the consequences of not moving your ass? And mm-hmm. I'm not. So that would be one thing I would just kind of, and if you can hear me whisper it, but I don't want the consequences. I don't want the consequences. So move your ass. That's what I'm yeah. going <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is so true. Yeah, it's like, man, there's going to be consequences, whether it's now or later, but yeah. that's good. The tough love coach, Christy. What about you, Corey? I'll, I'll go more of like the physical way. Um, I think Christy mentioned it, but find something that you love. Like, it doesn't have to be what the sexiest Instagram models are doing to make it like that. It does that's not for everyone, and it's sometimes, most of the time, not real. So find something that you love to do and be okay with that, and enjoy it. If you can enjoy it, just like Christy said, you're gonna do it. It's sustainable. If you're gonna try to do something that you hate. It's not going to last and you're just going to be caught in this vicious cycle. So find something that you love and do it and have fun with it. Yes. So good. So good. Jen, do you have another one or no? Did I take yours? <laughs> no, I'll go, I'll go with another one. Um, Cause another one that I'm always preaching about is honest, like be honest with yourself. Like what, what do you want to achieve? You know, if you're not trying to, cause most people aren't trying to go for, you know, a figure show. So, you know, do you need to be a hundred percent spot on? No. So if you're not, that's okay. Like yep. know what you want, be honest with yourself with what is holding you back and own it. Like just, um, because if you can get through that, then that can help you walk through those next phases of what to get you to that next step that you want. Um, what, you know, health, you know, running a marathon, whatever that may be, but be honest with yourself and own your barriers that you're facing. hundred percent. There you have it. I like it. And good job thinking on your feet guys. Cause that was impromptu. So <laughs> no warning, no warning yeah. given. Well, thank y'all for your input and for being here. These are like the best coaches in the world. Uh, but if you guys listeners found this episode relatable or helpful, please rate and review this podcast. You can do that by scrolling down to the bottom of the podcast page. It'll take you two seconds to leave that review. And really what it does, it just makes this podcast more visible to other people who really need to hear it. So Thank you guys for being here and for being with us today. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode.